All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the Data Discovery Open House. While you're getting settled in, please make sure to fill out the polling questions. Our subject matter experts are going to announce which business issue received the most votes and show you how data discovery can solve those live. So those polling questions are important. Also throughout the presentation, please think of business issues you are currently facing that we can address with data discovery. All right, the agenda for the open house is a quick introduction of my team. I'm then gonna give a brief background on data and analytics, then the live demonstration of data discovery, and we will then open it up for questions and answers. As you see the product, please once again, keep in mind to write down any issues that you're facing surrounding the revenue cycle or daily operations that we can address with data discovery. You can put your questions in the chat. It should be anonymous, so go ahead and don't be shy. All righty, so on the call, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Grace. I'm the sales manager overseeing data discovery at MGMA. Many of you probably know Liz Gurley. She is our senior data strategist at MGMA. And then we have some subject matter experts from our partners at Whitespace Health. We have Ani Osborne. She's the vice president of product overseeing practice operations. We have Amar Rayo, who is a product leader and revenue cycle expert. And then we have Jareen Matthew, senior vice president and revenue cycle expert. Between this team, we have over 40 years of medical revenue cycle and operations experience. So you guys are in good hands. So why did MGMA partner with Whitespace Health to create data discovery? Well, we know that reporting and dashboarding are important, but we wanted to bring that to the next level. We wanted to take the strengths from MGMA's data dive, along with our experts in consulting, and expand that to individual practice performance. We want to make sure that you can make sense of your data in a quick manner and bring all of your data from disparate systems into one easy to use system. We're gonna bring all of your practices up to speed with real time prescriptive analytics, which are actionable steps to solve business issues. And we will describe exactly what prescriptive analytics here in just a moment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, MGMA has been around since 1926. So we have nearly 100 years of experience in helping practices increase revenue while cutting costs. Uh, once again, as you learn about the tool and see the power of data discovery, please think of business issues that you're currently facing and we will show you how to address those in a one-on-one -on -one setting. How is data discovery going to help your practice? Well, we've designed this to specifically help combat the rising costs of healthcare. According to our cost and revenue survey, many of you on this phone call are probably operating on razor thin margins. So we want to be able to enhance patient and insurance collections. Our system is designed to specifically identify areas of revenue leakage and offer recommendations with artificial intelligence to quickly resolve those issues. We can actually almost eliminate human error which is incredibly important. We can also, or we also built this tool to combat staffing shortages. A lot of folks think of uh, medic healthcare staffing shortages as just physicians and nurses, but that's not true. We know firsthand that that's everybody on your operations team, your revenue cycle management team. So data discovery is actually going to increase the capacity of your current team. It's going to allow your business intelligence team to focus on areas that actually create revenue. It's also gonna help reduce training costs and improve consistency. Because of the machine learning, because of the artificial intelligence recommending actionable steps to follow, newer folks within your organization are gonna get up to speed faster and experienced folks are gonna have improved consistency. This tool will also reduce burnout. Uh, we know burnout is one of the main reasons folks are leaving the medical field in groves. It's a stressful job. So anything we can do to help that, uh, we're, we're all about it. So once again, data discovery is designed to solve business challenges with intelligence. We start with basic benchmarking. Why do medical practices benchmark? Well, you need to identify best practices to improve performance. 
Data discovery is going to allow, allow you to learn, adapt, and measure processes within your organization to optimize performance, but it's also important to benchmark externally. So we wanna learn from experiences of others. We also wanna see the strengths and weaknesses within your organization. Data discovery will help set realistic targets for your key performance indicators. And we are going to use this benchmark data to prioritize and allocate company resources. So data discovery is gonna help make sense of your KPIs. As you see below, this is a screenshot of a dashboard built within data discovery one of almost 300 custom dashboards, but you'll see the red, yellow, green, we call this stoplight analogy. This is going to allow you and folks within your organization to quickly visualize areas you're doing well and areas that we need to uh, send attention to. So areas in green, that's great. Looks like you're doing very well based on the parameters that you tell us that we set up during the implementation phase. Areas in yellow mean you're right where you need to be based on uh, what you the information you provide us and then areas in red those need to be addressed by you and your team so you can quickly see what needs to be addressed we even go one step deeper data discovery compares your real-time data against internal kpis and then again against mgma median data this screenshot on the right is going to be one of our kpi cards okay it's showing us that our current cancellation rate is 7.3%, which is in yellow. So it's right where you need to be within your organization. But you notice here that we're also a little bit above the MGMA median of 6.5%. We're able to get this information in seconds. The great thing is, is since last time this information was uploaded, we are trending in the right direction by 2.7%. So this is a quick visualization um, data discovery, it's not just a benchmarking or dashboarding tool, which we're going to show you in just a moment. It actually uses real-time prescriptive analytics to prescribe or recommend a plan of action. For those of you who don't know what prescriptive analytics are, we're going to have a brief history lesson. We start with descriptive analytics. This will identify trends and relationships. This is uh, descriptive analytics are often referred to as the simplest form of analytics because it can show you trends, but that's about it. This is a very important step in the journey, but unfortunately, most organizations spend too much time at this level, and some even stop their analytical journey here. We then get into diagnostic analytics. This is where we find out the why. We get past the observation. Let's say we see a chart going up or down we will figure out what happened to show uh, that that result came out. So in the previous slide, it's gonna tell us what happened for the cancellation rate to trend down by 2.7%. We then hop into predictive analytics. Predictive analytics tell you what could happen in the future based on historical trends. We can find areas of weakness and then make predictions. All of those are great, however, Prescriptive analytics, this is where we turn your data into dollars. Prescriptive analytics not only tell you what could happen, but also come up with a strategy to make sure a desired outcome is achieved. So it's a true action plan. It gives you a blueprint to execute change management, figuratively puts you in the driver's seat. Prescriptive analytics are a highly advanced use of technology using machine learning algorithms, a lot of if then or if else statements, so this technology is great. However, you still need humans to facilitate the actions recommended by the analytics. So I do want to stress data discovery is not here to replace anybody within your, your organization. It's simply here to help them perform at the highest level possible. Uh, while planning for the future, according to Black Book Research, three in four executives plan to put at least 10% of their IT budget into prescriptive analytics surrounding revenue cycle management. We often refer to data discovery as a real-time digital consultant because that's exactly what it is. Data discovery was designed by revenue cycle leaders and operational leaders to identify and stem revenue leakage. We use industry guidelines, the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to increase collections. We're gonna prevent denials now and stop them in the future. 
We also can improve operational performance and patient access. Properly used prescriptive analytics will also reduce patient, patient no-show and late cancellations, which is a huge revenue leakage area, okay? So this is a revenue cycle game plan powered by machine learning, years of professional experience, and the guidance from industry consultants to increase revenue while simultaneously decreasing operational costs. How does data discovery work? This is a great visualization. Before we hop in, most of our clients are using their business intelligence or data team, and they're spending up to 80% of their time preparing and cleansing data so that data can be used to make a business decision. This time should be spent modeling and creating action, which creates true revenue. Data discovery is gonna flip that 80% number on its head, meaning your data team will now spend 20% of their time preparing the data and 80% of their time putting that data to work for you and your stakeholders to make smart business decisions. How we do this, we ingest your data. So we take all of your data from disparate systems and put them into one place, whether that's structured data from a system like your PMR or your EMS system, excuse me, PMS or EMR system, or unstructured data. This can come from anything, from your billing, accounting, scheduling, patient management systems, really anything. We then use our proprietary data pump technology to normalize your data. We're taking all of the data that you have available and we're using artificial intelligence, natural language processing, optical character recognition, and machine learning. So then you can act on your data. Once the data looks good, it's all in one place, it's easy to use. We can diagnose, correct, monitor, predict, and more importantly, prescribe actions to follow so you can make smart business decisions to increase revenue. All right, we're about to show you the tool in action. However, I want everyone to know that you can type your questions in the chat box. Our team is standing by to answer those. And please write down any business challenges you're currently facing, and we will show you how data discovery can solve those issues in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I do want to remind you guys that this session is recorded and will be available for anyone who may have missed today. However, we do have one very exciting announcement. So for those of you who are attending this call, you will be entered in to win a grand prize. Uh, one lucky winner will be picked at random to go to Austin, Texas for the Formula One Grand Prix on October 22nd. Not only will you get two tickets with an actual seat, but you also get a travel voucher that can be used for hotel and airfare. We'll send out the official rules, but in order to qualify, one, you have to be on this call, so you're doing a great job there. And then you do need to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with my team to go over a specific business issue you are currently facing. All right, now let's go ahead and show you the tool here. I'm gonna give you a brief overview before we send this to our subject matter experts. So give me just a moment here. As we log in, I want you to know that all of this in our demo space is dummy data. So if there's any missing data or data that doesn't look quite right at the naked eye, that will be different with your actual data. But as you can see, there's a ton of visualization built into data discovery. On the revenue cycle side, we have everything from billing volume, payments, accounts receivable, denials, write-offs, payer analysis, tasks, patient responsibility, even telehealth. So these are what we call our KPI cards, and they quickly will give you a ton of information. So here for charge lag, with just one click of the mouse, we're seeing our top contributing factors by provider, payer class, payer name, tons of data. Uh, we're able to slice and dice with just a few clicks of the mouse. And as well, some of our folks may be more analytical and less visual, so we can instantly change these charts so you can see it in a different format. We call it table view. But back to the graph, we can drill down our information at the practice level. We can then drill down to location. Let's say here we want to look at the Grand Canyon Avenue location. We can then get down to the individual provider. So here for Chuck Norris, we can click it again and see the individual transaction. 
So you're getting tons of information very quickly. We can sort it by date, by location, sometimes even CPT code. And there's a lot of visualization, but beyond the visualization, we're able to make business decisions. Once again, for payments, tons of visualizations. For those who are more analytical, we have waterfall reports, which are super helpful. We even have uh, payments realized by percentage in a waterfall format. And you know, for something like accounts receivable, this is a huge area that we need to focus on. We can see real quick with these KPI cards that, hey, we're doing not very well. We're not doing well in days 31 through 60, but we are doing pretty good after that. Once again, we can drill down by date, practice, uh, location, even specialty, provider. So with just a few clicks of the mouse, we are able to unlock groves of data. Denials, all of this is incredibly important and going to allow you guys to perform better. On the operation side, I'm not gonna steal the thunder from our subject matter expert, Ani, but I do wanna let you know that there's a lot of visualization built within the operations as well. So with that being said, I am gonna turn it over to Ani. She is our subject matter expert for operations. So Ani, please go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be Ani. Thank you, Mike. Um, when I go to demo mode, I am going to turn off my camera, so I'm not taking my screen much. So please hang in there with me while I'm trying to share the right portion of the screen. And please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, give me one second. Um, uh, my apologies, I have the white screen, so I'm moving a little bit stuff around to make it easier, but all right, well, thank you so much, Mike, and I am very excited to be here, very excited to talk about the data discovery product, especially on the operation side, it is um, my baby, you can say, and I love every chart here, because every one of these charts gives you insights needed making your job easier and more efficient. Um, just like we had in financials, multiple areas in operations, we, to, we also have multiple areas where we try to analyze every, everything, not just your schedule and your cycle and your referrals, but also I want to point out in operations, we look into KPIs such as your staffing per locations, your RVUs, your revenues and expenses. So we will be uh, getting data from your GL system. We will be getting data from your RVUs, your collections, everything. So just want to point it out that data discover, discovery is truly unique in its sense that it gets data from everywhere you have it. This is not going to be just your PM system, EHR, but everything you have. That said, I will jump quickly on the exact scenario, how we will be using the data discovery and what Mike was talking about, descriptive and predictive and diagnostic analytics, not just to measure our performance, but actually make our performance better. And I'm looking at the poll, looks like we have almost uh, same amount of votes for a lot of the things, but by one <laughs> vote, we have the no-show cancellation higher than anything else. And I'm actually excited that this is the highest because quite often then when we ask to clients, people are like, oh, I don't have big no-show rate. But once you combine the no-show and cancellation, it is truly one of the biggest operational KPIs that makes a big negative impact on your, on your revenue. In fact, a lot of independent studies that is also confirmed by 600 clients we have, that it can cause over $150,000 loss in a year per provider. So not doing math, but doing math, if you have hundreds of providers, we are talking about millions of dollars a year. So I will, my goal will be to demonstrate how we can use data discovery to effectively reduce these losses and improve, improve revenue. So as you can see from my screen, in my dummy, dummy data scenario, my combined rate of cancellations and no-shows is around 
which is really high. But of course, knowing the, the KPI alone, the percentage is not enough. What we truly want to know is what contributes it, which we call the descriptive analytics. So with one simple click, I can just click here and tell what, where is this issue localized? Do I have problems by provider, by location, or an appointment type? So if I take an appointment type, right, instead of going hundreds of reports and reviewing all last years of data, et cetera, with one simple click, I can tell, oh, medication follow-up has 30% no-show rate. Instantly just tells me as a practice manager, hey, maybe we should reconsider even having medication follow-up. Maybe we just make this as a telemedicine or make it easier for our patients to get a refill or whatever it is. If there is so, this is such a skewed problem. And it can be anything else, right? This is just a dummy example. It can be Dr. John Smith has a is noticing a really high no-shows. Oh, what happened with Dr. John Smith? Is he doing something there? Of course, this contributor is very fast way to understand what is happening, where are the biggest areas of issues. What you want to do next, knowing having that knowledge in going into each individual chart where we have all and every piece of information needed for you to understand the true root cause and even create a work queue for your team to understand what can they do. So let's say I have a cap versus no-show and cancellation reasons and in revenue loss for missed appointments, three charts that will tell me a lot of information. I can do drill downs. So one important thing about our charts is not just trends monthly, but understanding drill downs and comparing the data by different country, uh, different things like practice, specialty. It can be even by provider resource. Most importantly, like Mike was showing, every one of our reports will go into encounter level and have all your historical data up until yesterday. You will get all your data at midnight and once you log in, you will see up to yesterday's data here. So just by one quick click, you can filter and say, all right, for that, those types of appointment, I can create a quick report that were like my education follow-up for this provider or this location and have my staff to review them by exporting and even sending it to them and then taking actions. Or you can not even, or you can do whatever way you want to create a report to make it actionable. We will give you all the data here. But this said, I want to uh, bring your attention that in my next step, when I go to Rev Intel, where we are doing the job for you, that consultant job, we are telling you what to do, how to do it. You will see the difference between this report and the next one. But I'll not steal my own thunder. I'm just bringing up that I will show you the difference between the reports. Next, say I'm reviewing the cancellations to understand even more what is going on. My favorite way of looking at this data is through drilling down by cancellation reasons. Quite often, when we take uh, someone live, they don't imagine how big is the impact provider-driven uh, reschedules. Provider has a new appointment coming up or is called for a surgery. And now the staff has to reschedule all their morning appointments. But what happens? The trend shows over and over, about 20, 30. In worst cases, even 50% of those provider-driven rescheduled appointments are not going to be kept. So that would be a good example to educate your providers that, hey, if you know that, for example, Thursdays, there is a 80% chance that you might be called for insurance, maybe let's not put 20 appointments back to back to back and set up processes to elevate the loss of those appointments. And in addition to that conversation, what we have noticed when it comes educating the providers, not the staff, it's easier to talk about not just numbers, hey, you lost 11 patients, but the overall, like in last year, how much money did it cost you? 
And once you translate those numbers to revenue loss, it makes that click moment to understand, oh, wow, yeah, this one of cases adds up and we have we are using our own method of calculating that potential missed revenue opportunity. We take data such as the appointment type, historical collection rate, everything for that particular kind of appointment to assume if that appointment were to be kept and that slot were to be utilized, how much revenue you would have earned. And we would show it to you here. So, um, and I know I am going really fast. So do please ask me questions in the chat and what I will do, I'll answer them once I finish. But there's a lot to cover. And as Mike was saying, we would be really happy to do one-on-one -on -one calls. What I wanna do next step is take you to the next level of our um, analytics. When we take all these, a lot of data, we bring um, more insights into it using our Revintel portion. Um, so what we do with Revintel, say you have right thousands of appointments that were canceled and no show, and you have other problem areas. As we all know, we are all overworked and understaffed. How do you know what to prioritize, what to do, what is exactly going to make the biggest difference? That's where our rev intel comes. We do all that for you. Use AI, you use whole engine to go through all of your data and identify the opportunities that will make the biggest impact. So let's take the same no-shows and cancellations, right? We saw that, okay, last 30 days, we I have, for example, let's assume over 100,000 appointments that were canceled and no-show. I'm talking about very large organization. So who should I contact first? Well, we'll create an AR rule and we will say, based on these conditions, these are the ones that should be prioritized. And those rules will be 100% customizable by our clients. We will provide you based on our own experience and libraries that we have seen working, but you will have an option to make it custom for you. A simple, very simple example. Let's say you have a patient who is, uh, has a chronic condition such as diabetes and hypertension. They call and make a schedule for an appointment that says, I'm having a bleeding, I need to come. Appointment is in two days. Somehow bleeding stops and they call in and cancel. Provider has no idea, right? This all happens between the staff, appointment gets created and removed. But if the provider knew, they would be wanting to have this patient come in because given their historical diagnostic information, this could mean something more serious than, oh, bleeding came, bleeding stop. So we will create all those rules and we will tell you right here, who are all those people you need to be contacting to rebook? So now we are taking your hundreds of data, we are refining the list to, to, to more impactful, this potential review, we are giving you the list. Uh, you can export it, create it into your queues and say, hey, let's call, let's say John Smith, the system based on the rules we agreed in AI is believes this is, a, this is the person we need to prioritize and contact first. And when my coworker Amar talks, you will see the same type of pattern applies to RCM. Same type of pattern and thinking applies to your um, referrals, to your appointment schedules, open orders, everything. So I just want to bring your attention. I'm just using one business case, how we can solve it. The next, where we are, now we solved it and brought back, let's say all this 20% of the past things. But what makes things better is the predictive appointment. Let's imagine if we could not be just re uh, retroactively solving and resolving this, but being proactive about all of these cases. What if I knew by 90% accuracy or confidence is like, as it is the right term in AI, that 
hey, Annie Osborne is not going to keep her appointment. She is either going to cancel the same day or she's going to just not show up. Well, the good news is not everything you can predict with accuracy, but no show and cancellation behaviors is one of the um, data points that AI has shown in industry for many years now that it can get really accurate in its prediction. So now, at this point, what we can do, look in, uh, bring the, oh, there is the right thing. Let's make sure you can see. What if I can look next 30 days and say, oh, here are the appointments. There is 97% chance they're not going to keep it. They're either going to no show or cancel. Now your team can resolve each of these before it happens. They can, there's multiple resolutions we recommend. We will give you all that resolutions in the list. A, for example, if our system assumes they are not going to keep it because they are live too far away and they're not going to have a transportation, we are going to recommend maybe this is better of moving from in-person to telehealth appointment. Or if it's in case of like medication follow-up, again, just do a telehealth, just call them. Don't make them come in because they are going to probably cancel or not show up. Or in case where it, this is one of the patients who is historically known not to keep their appointments and there isn't much you can do to convince them. These are more drastic cases where we would recommend to double book over the slot. Given other conditions, let's say if your provider is okay with that, if there is not a heavy date or anything, again, completely 100% configurable for their every single resolution. So we aren't going just to say, for all these appointments, double book. We are going to ensure that you and your providers are comfortable for every resolution we give. To take the, and the, more important thing, we don't even stop here giving you what you can do, but we even have added more functionality to help assist your team but with use of technology. In this case, we can do the outreach ourselves. Let's say if a John Doe is someone that we believe is not going to show up because the reminder messages are not good or they they believe that they do not need to prioritize their health, we will send them a specific curated messaging saying, hey, Joan, your doctor thinks you really should keep your appointment to ensure that you don't end up in ER or whatever is the correct messaging. So now we are aiding your staff and making their capacity even bigger with the use of technology. And in those cases where we think the double booking is better option, we can even use Care Accelerator where we will offer that option to someone who is waiting for three months to be seen. We know in some specialties, the wait times are insane and people who need to be seen cannot be seen today or when they need it. While there is in industry combined rate 15% at the minimum that the appointments are not going to be kept. And if we know it, we can act. We can not only stop the revenue loss, but we will also increase our overall patient satisfaction and population health by giving the patients who need to keep their appointment time and opportunity to get the care when they need it. In a summary, I know this was a lot of information, what do we do? We take your data from beginning. We start identifying overall performance, the contributors. We give you details, data from in contact, anything you need to understand what's causing to help you shape your processes and your education to next level where we create the prioritized rules based on the AI and our own expertise with your own input to automation and helping you resolve them quickly. And that said, um, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat for me that I can answer. If not, I will give the control to my coworker, Omar, who is 
will showcase the RCM example, how all these amazing tools that I just described can be used solving RCM issues. Thank you, Ani. All right, I'm stopping the share. Thank you, Ani. Uh, let me share my screen quickly. Yeah, hope you all can see my screen. Yes, we can. All right, thank you. So yeah, as uh, Mike have went through the financial, which is also called as the RCM. So he spoke about the billings and the different charts. So I don't want to again go through all these modules. So let me just jump in a scenario, uh, see how we can add value to the metrics or dashboards that we have it here. Right. So the most popular question today I see it's uh, cash is a challenge. So I'm not surprised because as for the NGMA study, uh, there's 24 percentage of cash which is going uncollected. So so let's look at from our product like how we can bring in the cash right so this two uh, smart cards which we spoke about earlier uh, this is the ncr and this is the gcr so if you see mgma see in all charts that we have given the benchmark mgma benchmark so anything that if you see less than that here in the ncr you see it's red uh, so that's exactly you see the ncr is very low in this case because probably there is a lot of cash is not collected or uh, there's an adjustment happening. So that's a situation in this case. So I click here. So as Ani and Mike has previously explained, so we look at what is the top uh, issues, who are the top providers who are contributing these challenges so we can work with. So just to talk about this, the tick mark and the exclamatory and there's, because this provider, for example, he's compared to last month and he performed well, but that's not still enough that we need to work on more for this provider. So any of uh, the leaders, the CFOs and senior leaders quickly can look at this smart card and take a decision and look at how this providers like get this work done, the work with the providers or players and so get this work. So that's the smart card, which helps for the senior leaders to look at quickly and take a decisions on this. So in this case, if you see, it isn't red. The reason is I've looked at the charts below. Uh, so it shows the same. If you see from October, the NCR is running very low, so which we need to look at. So the cash is not coming or the adjustment. So that is showing here. So it's similar to all these metrics. So all these month on month from October to May, the NCR is low. So till September, it was going good, but slowly after October, it started reducing. So in this case, uh, I want to, uh, if you see, we can export all the data and see what are the challenges. That's a one way. And we can have an options of filtering that we can filter any specific locations or practices or any departments that is causing these challenges. And uh, so we want to look at a quarterly basis, half a year, monthly. So uh, in, we, we are getting into a leadership meeting and then we just want these slides to be placed in our uh, PowerPoints or uh, sending it to the leadership. So we have options to export this data and send it to the team. So in this scenario, if you see from October again, the NCR is low. So we need to find out why this uh, cash is low, why this adjustment are happening or payment is not coming. So I a little bit go into deeper and see this waterfall analysis. So this waterfall analysis, what it tells me is, so if you see again, in the month of October, the payment is not coming here. So the challenge here is the payment is still stuck in October, November, December. We are seeing that there is a low payment. So there is a serious issue, uh, the why this payment is not coming. And so we, to get a little deeper, so we also look at from a CPT level, so seeing that, okay, what are the top CPTs? So we'll drill down. We can go do detail into it and con uh, convert into a, a data and work with the team to allocate these accounts. There's another options, which we'll have it for all the charts to look at this and get into it. And I just keep this charts. There are two reasons that I keep this chart here. One, so this chart, if you feel that it's more of clumsy or you, we can customize the charts anytime as per your requirement. The charts, if you see, it, the, both the charts are similar, 
you see this is a bar and this is different charge so this can be customizable or you quickly want to see this chart convert into a table view and look at these charts so if you see here the charges payments and adjustments so the adjustments is high it's going high that's what this chart tells us again i little go deeper so this is the chart that is again telling me if you see from after october the charges has been increased from september but the payment the adjustments are high the ar balance are high so this is the challenge that we see when the charges are increased the payments are the and the ar balance is increasing and the adjustments are increasing there might be several reasons so there might be um, suddenly the volume new volumes has been added where we don't have the people to work or some reasons that uh, we see the volumes has been increased that we are not able to manage ourselves so in this case the adjustment happened more and the ar balance is less so we here after this i would say it's not any more a dashboard so it's like uh, we build a product that extends beyond analytics so i am just taking out all these adjustments and going into my rev rental right so push this using our the series of rule engines and ai based algorithms and we are going to look at all these accounts which was adjusted or written off seeing that what is the money still there that we can go and enhance we can collect there is an opportunity of collections that we can do it from the adjustments of written off that happens in the past 12 months maybe in this case it's like from october there's still money if you see here it shows like from front office denials we see 130k uh, the back office denial we still see 708k that is an opportunity of money that we can collect so that's what my, here the enhanced talks about but at the same time accelerate so this is from the ar balance seeing that how we can accelerate the money by working on the accounts effectively so maybe a high dollar value accounts has to be prioritized or any denial that we received which was not addressed before so that's something that we need to go and attack this fast to accelerate our cash so in that case you see go back and look at these charts where we should see an improvement a reduction of adjustments and write offs and the ar balance reductions and the cash is improve, improving and the ncr has to increase so that was the objective if you see the value that this the resolution insights that we bring in and that is what built here so here uh, all the cfos or ceos on the call that you know you can quantify what is the re returns that you will gain by looking at these adjustments or looking at these write offs how we can uh, convert that uh, gain the revenue here right so that's the plan here so we are not stopping here so we just going and clicking here and see that getting into what month on month what is the data like how it flows in terms of denials in terms of providers or payer class so and then i get into a resolution insight so maybe the first rev in eval rev intel i speak about their cfos and ceos to look at a senior leader will be like to move a little deeper into the analysis so that's why we given this resolution insight uh, if you see a uh, a pivotal summary stocks about what is the encounters what is the potential opportunity that reimbursement that we can expect on these so there is a summary and that can be exported and uh, discuss with the team discuss with the uh, leaders in the organization right and we have different fields that you can play around and uh, get the reports accordingly so we are not stopping here again we are looking at list of encounters that's given here which we saying that what is the potential opportunity again to collect the money for example i would just take an example here right so if if you say around one to uh, in this case 525k is a build amount where there is a potential opportunity still there 122k uh, so that is what expected on this uh so this has a encounter level details with the recommended actions so we again we can have an option of exporting this into an excel to work on or there is a, there's again a fields column fields that we can choose and play around here right and there's a filter option that we don't need to work on all the months maybe we want to select a recent month to work so it's easy that at least let's attack the recent month to get the money the expected reimbursement or you want to look at from the top dollar to the lowest so that is something that we can do it here as well so we are not stopping here 
So we go and look at into a resolution center. So what is our recommendations from these encounters to get worked? So when I click here, I go into a detailed recommendation screen, which tells, right, what is that we need to do on this account to resolve? So we are not, all right, so it tells us like, okay, this CPT code, maybe you have to take these actions and this is what happened previously. So this is our recommendations. So when I give a continue option, it is, again, if you see there is a matched account, similar to this account, we still see there are 25 accounts with a dollar value, which can be resolved in one, one go. So what happens is most of the time an IFT works on an associate works on an account. So they might take for a day like 30 encounters or 40 encounters to work and it takes. So we are saying that there is a match to works of 25. So by working on one account, an associate can complete 25 accounts uh, within, uh, within a two minutes or five minutes of the call or they're making it. So that's the matched work accounts that we talk about here, right? So I go here, I click, and I go to the next. So it, go, it is telling me the complete actions. So here, again, we are giving a, a standard format notes that can be customizable, saying that, okay, this is the notes, this is the action that we are taking it. So let's, this way you can copy that, you can put it in your practice management system and confirm. So by this, we are completing all these 25 accounts, what we identified uh, initially on the Rev Intel, right? The intelligence that we bring in. So first thing we spoke about this to summarize, I see there is a cash problem. There is an adjustment issues. There's a lot of adjustments happening. So we did the rev, rev enhance and see what is the opportunities of cash that is available. So that we go and say step-by-step step how we work on it and we get that cash back. So that's the complete product that we spoke about here, All right? So yeah, that's pretty much uh, about this. And just to talk about one more. So if you see, this AI recommendation I'm saying here is any action that we are going to take based on the past history, it is telling us what is the potential opportunities of success rate. So let's say if I'm going to rebuild this claim, it says 30 percentage in the past, there is a, all these rebuilds has been converted into payment. So 50% of the review payer is converted into a payment. So that is also telling. So we know that what actions which is taking and which is going to give an opportunity of collections. So that's completely about uh, the Rev Intel dashboard. Awesome. And, yeah. I'm Thank you, Amar. To... Yeah. Much I appreciated. Just... Let me see any questions. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm ready to take it up. Thank you. Absolutely. Please go ahead and put any questions in the chat or save it so we can go over it in a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, one more thing to reiterate is we know there's over 250 built-in charts and dashboards. All of those are customizable for your home screen. So everyone in your practice gets their own login, meaning the CFO is going to have a different, you know, they're going to set up their home screen different than a practice manager. Anyone within your organization is going to have instant access to the charts and graphs that they want to see at first glance. And then everyone has access, obviously, to all charts and graphs. You can also limit access for certain job titles within your organization. You can have emails or text messages go out at a scheduled time. So a lot of organizations will choose, you know, an 8 a.m. email with certain charts and graphs. So everyone within your organization is on the same page. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. So I would really like to thank you all for joining. Please fill out that Formula One giveaway. And we would love to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with you and go into more details of how data discovery can help you at the practice level. All right. Well, thank you everyone for their time. And uh, my name, once again, is Mike Grace. You'll have quite a few emails from me. So feel free to email me any questions that you may think of after this call.